They are retail relics, simple items from a simple time, a chapter that in large part is missing from pages of history books of the U.S. Deep South. These are some of the grocery store names from some of the grocery stores that were around in the Mississippi Delta. Look at the store names from the old black and white photos. There is a deep connection with China in the Mississippi Delta. In the late 1800s and the early part of the 20th century, hundreds of Chinese men came to the Deep South, lured by promises of riches by replacing slave labor and picking cotton on plantations. And they never really intended to stay. But the way the Delta was running and the way the South was running, um, this introduction of another society was needed, actually. Um, it became the buffer between black and white, and they, that significant story has followed the Chinese throughout the times that they've been in the Delta. Hundreds of Chinese family members in just a few decades. Dozens of grocery stores. Joan says the Chinese work ethic led the U.S. immigrants to leave the cotton fields and open small grocery stores all over Mississippi. This all came out of a grocery store that just closed up. For the past several years, Emily Jones, through the Mississippi Delta Chinese Heritage Museum, has been preserving the oral history. Mrs. Lee, do you understand that this conversation is being taped and will be deposited at the Delta State University Archives? Yeah, yes, I do. What were your roles in the grocery store? I ran the, the, the checkout in the front. Harry and Jerome Sue worked in the family store as little more than toddlers. Today, 74-year-old Harry and 79-year-old Jerome still run the Minsang grocery store. Beef sausage, pork sausage, pork and beef, beef and chicken, beef and turkey. <laughs> it just went crazy. Jerome remembers racism that came with being non-white in the deep U.S. South. It was bad. It was bad going to the shop. They wouldn't cut us. They wouldn't cut my hair. I said, we don't want to cut shot in my hair. But he says the children found a way to cope. We got to play with the black kid. We, we, we didn't think about races. We, we black get together and uh, play games together. At the height, there were more than 50 grocery stores owned by Chinese American families in the small town of Greenville, Mississippi. But that was a long time ago. Today, there are just a few. And with the owners of Min Sang talking about retiring, it's going to be a big loss to this community. And also a graphic reminder of why it is so important to preserve the rich oral history. <laughs> Lucille Joe's parents ran a grocery store in Marks, Mississippi. Then she raised her two sons, Stephen, now a dentist, and Raymond, an IT specialist, in a small house connected to the back of the store. I loved working in the grocery store. It was fun to me. I loved all aspects of it. Uh, I liked stocking shelves. I liked cutting meat. I was probably a professional butcher by the time I was 13 years old. <laughs> he and his wife, Helen, have three young, successful daughters. The Joes say the reason there are no more Chinese grocers is simple. The parents wanted them to have better lives and leave the Mississippi Delta. My parents instilled in us that we had to have a great education. Go to school, do well in school. You've got to do well because we want better for you. It wasn't easy for the older generations, but they overcame racism and poverty. They call it a haystack pie. One thing the Joes are keeping, the Mississippi accent, as thick as molasses. And it's the funniest thing because sometimes they're not, they're, they're not looking at you and they hear someone speaking with a southern accent, so then they turn around and they say, what, <laughs> who said that? And then they realize it came from me or Stephen and, and, and they're just shocked, what? An oriental with a southern accent. And at the end of the day, preserving their story and their voice is what it's all about. If you don't tell your story, somebody else will, and they may not tell it the right way. <laughs> Without the nucleus of story, we wouldn't be able to tell what's happening in all these pictures. Sean Cables, CGTN, Cleveland, Mississippi.